Welcome back to the Dallas Prospect. I am Derek Kirby and today I have the unfortunate duty of basically talking about the latest scandal for the Dallas Mavericks and the Sports Illustrated article that less than two years after the last Mavericks scandal, which Sports Illustrated broke, basically kind of retread the same waters but arguably worse. So we're going to get into this today. It's not the kind of basketball content I like to cover on the channel, but I feel like it's something that has to be talked about because if this isn't worked through and the culture isn't changed, then the organization is going to remain problematic, especially in this current climate. So without further ado, let's just get into the basics here. On September 19th, 2018, Sports Illustrated broke a story detailing the prevalent sexual harassment and workplace misconduct within the Mavericks front office dating back to the early 2000s when Mark Cuban first purchased the team. The story exposed numerous failures within the organization to investigate such matters, showing a passive head of HR, a predatory CEO, and an abusive team employee. And then there was the infamous Pants DJ within the sales department who frequently viewed pornography at work and rubbed himself without discretion. Awesome stuff. The findings were so damning that the Mavericks were forced to take immediate action to not only try and repair their reputation, but overhaul a toxic culture within the organization. To do this, they hired former AT&T exec Cynthia Marshall, who in turn hired Tarsha LaCour and Cynthia Wales. The goal, Marshall said, was not only to cleanse the problematic elements from the organization, but to become the league standard for such matters by 2019. Then in 2019, a woman stepped forward with new accusations against the high-ranking employee of the Mavericks, Director of Player Personnel Tony Ronzone. Ronzone, by the team's own admission on their website, had his fingerprints all over the scouting of Maverick superstar Luka Doncic. Less than two years after SI's original piece on the Mavericks sexual harassment issues, the publication once again came forward with explosive claims of negligence in the team's investigation of the woman's claims. The woman identified only as Sarah alleges that she was thrown onto a drunk Ronzone's bed and then pinned beneath him as he tried to forcefully kiss and grope her. As she resisted, repeatedly telling him no and that she was married, he grabbed her hand and pressed it to his crotch. When she pulled away again, he attempted to dig his hand into her pants, saying, quote, you know you want it. Eventually, the woman managed to convince Ronzone to stop and promptly left his room. She had been there to pick up tickets to a Mavs Summer League game, hoping to build a relationship with the team so that they might sponsor her nonprofit program for girls basketball. Ronzone, she says, had assured her it was as good as a done deal, and states that her ongoing interaction with him after the event, somewhat uncomfortable as it might have been based on the text messages obtained by SI, was her attempt to maintain that promised sponsorship. When it became clear that she would not hook up with Ronzone, however, he became vague about his assurances of the team's support. There's a lot to this story, and I strongly encourage you to read the full piece on SI.com, but it's clear that Sarah and Ronzone had an encounter of some kind that night after having dinner and talking basketball. Phone and text message records support that immediately following the incident in Ronzone's room, Sarah reached out to a former Homeland Security federal agent who is now a security consultant for an Eastern Conference team. The agent, who had spent eight years specializing in cases of human trafficking, not only verified that he had spoken on the phone for several minutes after the event, but said that he had encouraged her to file a police report, which she actually declined since she hadn't actually been raped. A few months later, after Sarah had had time to process what had happened and tried and failed to obtain any sort of accountability from the Mavericks herself, the agent signed a sworn declaration of their conversation from that night, and Sarah and her legal team prepared for a lawsuit against the Mavericks. After initially reaching out to Mark Cuban himself, only to be promptly rerouted to Cynthia Wales, Sarah says the team's response wavered, going from supportive and insisting action would be taken to outright dismissal under the guise of some free shirts for her nonprofit. 
This Sarah outright rejected before seeking legal representation. After the firm gathered sworn statements from four different individuals Sarah had told of the event in the weeks following the encounter, it attempted to enter settlement negotiations with the Mavericks. A major problem in this, however, was that the firm would not allow the Mavericks to see the statements until they entered into negotiations, a condition the Mavs could have entered, but instead ignored. With negotiations never started, Sarah remained silent for months as the two sides went back and forth. After Dallas's initial failure to discipline Ron's own, she had sought legal counsel. With the legal counsel, the firm appeared to be more interested in the settlement, of which they would have netted themselves 40%. For Sarah, if the amount was life-changing for her nonprofit, it would be worth it. But eventually, she became more fixated on speaking out than attempting to collect a settlement, at which time she relieved her representation and began working with SI in October of 2019. So what about the Mavericks involvement in this? Beyond refusing to discipline Ron's own, where exactly did they fall short? Well, by willfully declining to see the sworn statements supporting Sarah's claim, they seemingly conducted a voluntarily incomplete investigation. An investigation, by the way, they strangely elected to have their HR team run. Quote, as a matter of best practices, it was clearly a lapse in judgment to let HR conduct the investigation of these allegations, says Kim Susser, a New York victim's rights lawyer who has served as an independent investigator for sexual harassment claims. The Mavericks should have started an independent investigation into Sarah's claims, but they didn't. They then declined to make a counteroffer with Sarah's representation to see the sworn statements corroborating her account, stating that she was just looking for a payout. In emails with Sarah, which she has since leaked, the team appears to question whether she was ever actually in Ronzone's room, despite the fact that there are text message records with his phone that verify as much. After SI published its piece, the Mavericks blasted the report, calling it one-sided, incomplete, and sensational journalism filled with inaccuracies, omissions, and mischaracterizations. When asked about the report, Cynthia Marshall had the following to say. I wasn't going to let them get away with it. You can't come after our brand like that. You can't come after our hard work like that. But what disturbed me the most is that you actually have people who have experienced something horrific in the past. Some who no longer work with the Mavs. Some of who are at the Mavs. And every time a story like this comes up, it stirs up something in people. For this to come up and to put us in a position We've got to provide counselors and talk to our people. It's just irresponsible, especially when I have been talking to them almost to the point of being bullied since June 22nd, giving them everything they needed. Marshall contends that the team's investigation was thorough and effectively absolved Runzone of any wrongdoing, stating that Sarah's story had changed over time. When asked for specifics on this, however, she declined, stating, I won't go into detail. She continually reiterated that there was a consistent ask for money and that the lack of a police report, despite the team's encouragement to do so, factored into things, despite admitting she has not seen the sworn declarations. These declarations, mind you, the team has had the ability to access since January 24th. Said Sarah's representation, we always want to protect the affiants. The Mavs never signed the NDA, so that is why we did not give them the affidavits. When SI reached out to Ron Zone directly for comment, he forwarded them instead to his lawyer, who labeled Sarah's account as a fabrication and misrepresented that her former legal counsel had actually fired her, a point which Sarah, SI, and her former legal representation itself all deny. This is a very complex story. The Mavericks did not appear to conduct a full investigation and made the curious choice to conduct it internally rather than hiring an independent firm, as is more typical in such situations. While the team did report the investigation to the league as mandated after its 2018 scandal, the league itself has not taken any kind of action yet. As for Sarah's change in her approach to the matter, it's not uncommon for victims of sexual assault to change their perspective over time as they cope with what's happened. 
At first, Sarah didn't want Ron Zone to potentially lose his job, instead focusing on the promised sponsorship of her nonprofit. However, after definitively telling Ron Zone via text message they would not under any circumstances be hooking up, Ronzone appeared to take a step back, going from playful and somewhat forwardly flirting to distant and at times unresponsive. Upon perhaps a last-ditch effort to sway her, he reminded her that he's also married, thereby somehow making it okay for her to cheat because, hey, he'd be cheating too. At this, Sarah joked that she could always use this information to blackmail him for the financial support for her nonprofit. That is certainly a red flag, but it is in keeping with the conversation, the tone of the conversation in their text messages at the time. When Sarah reached out to the Mavs, she says she found herself being gaslighted by the team as they attempted to more or less buy her off with shirts for her program. After refusing this, she sought legal counsel, wanting to ensure justice while using the settlement money to help her nonprofit. Over time, however, she changed her mind and her perspective changed to wanting instead to bring attention to the truth and seeking justice for what had happened rather than getting a financial payout. As such, she worked exclusively with SI, whom she had started working with in October. It's unclear where things will go from here, but Ronzone's lawyers, best known perhaps for his successful defense of Derrick Rose and his own sexual assault case from a couple of years ago, insist that if things do go to court, he looks forward to proving his client's innocence. It's rare for a team to so vehemently respond to accusations like these, particularly so soon after a scandal of a similar nature within the organization. The possibility that Sarah's legal team dropped the ball by trying to force the Mavs into settlement negotiations in exchange for seeing the sworn declarations is certainly fair to speculate, and the Mavs themselves have criticized this, saying that redacted versions could have been shown that would have protected identities while still making a full picture clear to the team. But the Mavs' seeming willingness to dismiss credible claims while knowingly viewing only part of the picture and then acting with righteous indignation upon the story's release is pretty difficult to justify. Add to that the fact that they and Ron Zone's attorney continually state that her claims have continually changed, only to then decline to provide even a single example. This is troubling. If the SI article did mischaracterize and omit key information that would absolve the team and Ron Zone specifically, they should probably release something regarding that information. Since there is no lawsuit pending presently, this would help clear their name if in fact they are telling the truth. Otherwise, their contentious reaction to SI's article is only going to further paint them in the role of the villain, trying to crack down on a woman who, in addition to no longer seeking a financial settlement, had the courage to speak out against her attacker and the organization shielding him. As this story develops further, I'll post more updates, but man, this is not... This has not been a fun story to dig into by any means. Uh, Sarah herself, that's not her name, obviously. That's just like a code name used in the story to protect her name, her identity. The story itself is pretty damning. The Mavericks have since released a couple of statements. I read to you Cynthia Marshall's statement as well. Obviously, she was hired with the objective of cleaning up the culture of the front office. So for her, this is kind of a direct challenge to her job and what she's been doing, what she was hired to do. And Sarah, for what it's worth, on Twitter has actually leaked several of the emails showing her correspondence with her former legal representation and even the Mavericks themselves. She has a connection as well to Daryl Armstrong, Mavericks assistant coach, and former Maverick player. And it's interesting to see from her account and the back and forth of it all, how the, how the perspective seemed to change from the Mavericks. In addition to it going from very supportive and basically saying like, hey, this is going to lead to him losing his job. You know, don't worry, this will get taken care of. To basically getting to the point where they're completely dismissive and outright calling her a liar just looking for money it's pretty drastic how blatant this change has been so if the mavericks have something that fully supports what they're saying they should release it but 
In the meantime, I'm just looking forward to basketball being back. The Mavericks resume their season on Friday. That's probably going to be, at this point, you might be talking about tomorrow, but depending on how long this video takes to render, it could be today when you're seeing this. So for the, for the meantime, until we get more updates on this, I'm just gonna focus on basketball itself and the Mavericks role as we start to head towards the playoffs. That's all for my time on this video, guys. If you like this, which I don't mean the subject matter clearly, I just mean these kind of formal update videos on major stories. Don't forget to drop a like, a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, buy the t-shirts on represent.com, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect.